After this session, you will be able to explain the direct mapping technique, explain how a memory address block is divided, state advantages and disadvantages of the technique, and solve direct mapping questions using given formulae. So, what is direct mapping? Well, direct mapping is one of the methods used to store information for a quick access for the processor. This method determines where blocks of memory will be stored in which lanes of cache. Now each block in main memory has a specific lane in the cache which it can be mapped to. The cache is smaller than the main memory, hence multiple blocks of main memory are mapped to a single lane of cache. If a lane in cache is already full, when a new block of main memory needs to be written to it, the lane will simply be replaced and overwritten with the new data added. Before we actually begin to start mapping the main memory blocks to cache, it would help that we understand how the main memory address block being written to cache is divided. During data transfer, a whole block of main memory is read. As mentioned before, the direct mapping of cache allows a block of main memory to be mapped to a single line of cache. Main memory is divided into three fields, the tag, the line, and the word. The word, W, represents the least significant bits which uniquely identify an address from main memory. The remaining bits, which is S, represent the most significant bits of the address which are further divided into two fields. The line, R, which represents the cache line, and the tag, S-R, which represents the unique identifier for that address block. There are a number of formulae which we can use in order to determine which cache line a main memory block is mapped to. These formulae include address length, number of addressable units, block size, number of blocks in main memory, number of lines in cache, size of cache, and size of tag. So we've seen a bunch of formulae but what to do with them you may ask? Now that we know and understand the basics of direct mapping, we can move on to actually implementing what we know with the formulae. Here is an example. A cache memory can hold 32 kilobytes. Data is transferred between main memory and the cache in blocks of 16 bytes each. The main memory consists of 512 kilobytes. Show the format of main memory addresses in a direct mapping cache organization. Note, you are to assume that addressing is done at the byte level. We can start by first finding the value of the word. The word, as mentioned earlier, represents the least significant bits which uniquely identify an address block from main memory. In this example, it is represented by the blocks of data transferred between the main memory and the cache, which is 16 bytes each. We can represent 16 bytes as 2 to the 4 bytes because 16 is equal to 2 to the 4. From this, we can gather that W is equal to 4. Our next step is determining the number of lines. This can be calculated by using the formula cache capacity over line size. Plugging the values in from the question, we get 32k divided by 16 bytes. We can convert these into bases of 2, and we get 2 to the 5 by 2 to the 10 over 2 to the 4. Adding the numerator indices, we get 2 to the 15, and subtracting the denominator from the numerator, we get 2 to the 11, which is equal to 2 to the r, therefore r is 11, and the number of lines is 11. Next we need to work out S plus W. Now in the example given 2 to the S plus W is represented as a mean memory capacity that is 512 kilobytes. Therefore 2 to the S plus W is equal to 512k. Converting 512k into bases of 2 
we can add the indices and get 2 to the 19. Therefore, S plus W is equal to 19. Finally, we need to work out the tag. The tag can be worked out using the equation S minus R is equal to S plus W minus R plus W. We previously worked out that S plus W is equal to 19. R is 11 and W is 4. R plus W is 15, therefore S minus R is equal to 4. Therefore, this is how the cash line is structured. Word is 4 bits, line 11, and tag is 4. Advantages and Disadvantages of Direct Mapping Direct mapping is simple and inexpensive to implement as it only requires one comparator to determine whether a hit has occurred. As a result of there being only one comparison needed to determine if a hit has occurred, direct map cache generally have lower access times. The main disadvantage of direct mapping is that it lacks mapping flexibility. The direct mapping technique maps each block of main memory into one possible cache line. As a result, this drastically limits the flexibility of direct mapping when compared to other techniques discussed later. In direct mapping, for any given block, there is a fixed cache location. Consequently, if a program references a word continuously from two different blocks and they map to the same line, then the blocks would repeatedly swap with each other, causing the hit ratio to be low. That is known as trashing. Here are some questions that you should be able to answer based on direct mapping.